And when it comes to procedural content creation and simulation, no tool does it better than SideFX Houdini. The folks at SideFX have just released a sneak peek of Houdini 20, and Houdini 20 now shapes with a couple of interesting tools changing the way animators, simulation artists, and rendering artists would work going forward, redefining several tools and also offering a quality of life improvement to several sections of Houdini. And all of this makes for a great new update and feature release for Houdini as this version ships and drops the mic on three major sections which includes shading and rendering, animation and rigging, and simulation, with offerings in various other sections of Houdini making this release a very worthy one to have. And for rendering, there's a couple of cool features that are coming over to Houdini 20, as this sneak peek features a lot for camera, which is Houdini's physically based path tracer, which is deeply integrated with USD. And Kama seems to be slated to replace Mantra, which is Houdini's previous rendering engine. Kama, which already has a typical CPU and XP rendering feature, now ships with more features and support that would allow artists to take advantage of CPU and GPU rendering of fog boxes, which in turn would give artists a more convenient way to work around scenes with volumes without sacrificing performance. There's also support for nested dielectrics, absorption, dispersion, and crypto math, giving artists all of that flexibility when and they would like to render any of these properties that have just been mentioned by simply relying on Kama XPU. And for CPU rendering in Kama, there is now support for the 4 shader with Medulla. The Team World transmission for Material X standard surface is also coming to Houdini 20, and this will produce a more realistic light bounce and transparency on surfaces it's been applied on. The Kama Physical Sky and S coordinates on curves is also coming over to Houdini 20, and there is a new section that deals with render statistics, and this in itself would be very useful as artists would be able to tell what engines have been used, the samples, resolution, devices, host, memories, and so on. Basically, every single thing you need to know when rendering a scene will be found here. And more so, there are a few more things that I love that are coming over to Houdini 20. One of them is the distributed multi-frame and multi-shot rendering. This is definitely going to be cool and I believe a lot of people will take advantage of it. There's also the material linker and catalog which would allow users link materials from existing catalog. Alongside that, the material X from AMD which we've talked about severally which is the AMD material X library is also coming to Houdini. So we've mentioned this on the channel before. It's quite interesting to see that this is now integrated into Houdini as the material library is easily accessible for all, right now you will be able to use that directly in Houdini. And for those who are thinking about checking this one out, probably you want to get it, we're going to link that down below. So by default, VOPs are node-based shading, which in various instances can be used to describe surfaces, which can be created, deformed, and also destroyed. And with the room map VOP, artists can now create panels, which they can use to create some form of parallax within their scene. This offers layouts, which you can use as samples to get this things going, and this will greatly optimize how scene building would be moving forward. And for Blender artists looking for a similar effect, you can definitely check out Cheapwater's Kidops Parallax, as this is pretty similar to the room map VOP which is coming over to Houdini 20. Now this is actually for viewport and not for rendering, but we're just going to put that on the viewport rendering. And that is Vulkan. Vulkan is coming to Houdini 20, so just in case you've been wondering when will Vulkan make its entrance to Houdini, right now with Houdini 20 you will be able to take advantage of Vulkan within your viewport. Video reference in viewport is coming, and you can now use that to match your animation as you animate. Animation, which has had a good set of love with the previous versions of Houdini, is having even way more love. There's one cool feature that is coming over to Houdini 20, which I so like the animating with ragdolls. So instead of keyframing your characters or keyframing several things within your scene, you can now simply add ragdolls and animate those things and get that full realistic motions without animating them. More so, if you're into projectile motions, you can add direct your projectiles how you want and get this to stick to the object as you wish. With the sticky collision, at any point in time, you're shooting anything, say for example an arrow, that will stick to the model and you don't need to animate that over time. There's a new selection set in terms of the new animation environment. 
Continuing what the folks at Houdini did with the introduction of character rigging and retargeting framework with KineFX in Houdini 18.5, the new selection set just simply makes animating with Houdini a breeze. And like we mentioned before, at any point in time, you're thinking about referencing your motions, you can now bring in a video reference in your viewport and get this going. There's also the RPD cone twist constraint. So just in case you're thinking about rigging a vehicle, yes, you can. So you can literally use this to rig your car and at the same time you can plug this with an existing equipment and control this directly within your viewport in Houdini. And Houdini, which is known for its procedural simulation tools, is also coming with a lot of things with Houdini 20. Valium, which is Houdini's simulation framework that uses position-based dynamics approach for clothes, hair, grains, fluids, and soft body objects, is having an update and that deals with the Valium Wind Shadow. This is a new update that is coming over to Houdini and will be super cool for those who are into Valium. The feather system is also a very cool one that we're seeing as this super procedural set of tool would also allow for a more interesting way to create feathers in Houdini. And the feather procedural is now available for all Hydra delegates. And alongside this, Houdini's ocean procedural has been redesigned with support for all Hydra delegates as well. And for those who are working with Pyro, the density driven gravity is also here. Like in this example, you can see it when it's turned off and when it's turned on, there is a bit of a change with it. You can now have a much more realistic density that is being driven by gravity when working in your scene. And for fluid, there's a couple of cool things that we have here. The fluid volume combine is now here. There's also the SOP white water solver, which is super interesting. And in terms of white water post-processing, there is now some set of settings that allows you to play with both the pressure, the stretch, squish, and also surface skill, providing the artists with parameters to create compelling water effects and bodies. And for those who are into solver simulations, OpenCL Ripple Solver is coming over to Houdini. Then as well, there's an OpenCL snippet. And for muscles, there's an update to the Franken muscles. This is very useful because not all muscles are sausage shaped. So just in case you like to paint in some parts and define those parts as muscles, you can now do that. And for simulation, there are some fun tools that are now coming to Houdini 20. And that includes the bubble generator. And also, there's a cloud tools skybox, which allows anyone to create clouds. So at any point in time, you want to create clouds, you want to do some noise driven clouds, or maybe you like to add direct your clouds. Yes, you can. You can now do all of these in Houdini. And more so, if you do have objects that you like to convert to clouds, you can do all of that and have fun working with them. And for those who might be asking, what about modeling? Because in previous versions of Houdini, we get to see some modeling tools come over to Houdini. And this time we do have just one modeling tool, which deals with the quad remesh. Hopefully there are more modeling tools that will be teased during the launch. But currently what we have is the quad remesh and this looks super cool. And if you're into UV, the hex styling is also coming over to Houdini. And if you're into procedural models for games, the Houdini engine for Unreal Engine now has a tool shelf. So this is a very interesting one. More so, the world partition and landscape is also having a very interesting feature in Houdini Engine for Unreal Engine. And speaking about game stuff, ML terrain generation is also available in Houdini and this will definitely change how artists create terrains that they will be using for their games. So this is it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Do you work with Houdini? Are you interested in taking a look at some of these features? And which of these features would you want to see in the DCC app that you currently work with that you love so much that is in Houdini? I'd like to know what your thoughts are in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.